Thanks a lot, Max. Uh, that was very enlightening, actually. Uh, we sat in uh, a session on open data just yesterday uh, for about five hours, uh, a bunch of folks interested in, in that, uh, that stuff um, talking about these issues. So it's very interesting. Next up, we've got Laurel Ruma. Uh, Laurel is a great uh, government uh, cover, you know, person who does government coverage, works for O'Reilly Media, and she's here to talk about better than winning the World Series, Boston Opens. Come on up, take it away. Thanks, everyone. Um, I am finally, actually, will admit that I am from Boston. This is where I live, and this is the city that I love. And you may know that Boston is actually pretty famous for a number of things, including our fine, fine educational institutions, such as Harvard and MIT. We also have this long legacy of having also the first Tea Party, as well as the country's first subway system. So the, Ma the Massachusetts Bay Transit Authority, the MBTA for short, the T if you live there, is a subway system that actually incorporates also buses, trains, and ferries, and carries over a million people a day. So we also have our iconic Red Sox baseball team. And in 1918, the Red Sox won the World Series. And then it took decades and decades for the Red Sox to win the World Series again. But when they did, it was amazing, and everyone cheered. 3.2 million people came into the city of Boston for the ticker tape parade that day. The subway, of course, was overwhelmed. Here's a tea stop. Um, but the important thing is that people from around the world participated. This was a community effort, and the MBTA had not had much luck in those decades either. It is burdened with debt from the Big Dig, which is the most expensive infrastructure project in the country. We also have uh, cost overruns and um, expensive fares, so people are unhappy with the MBTA. The MBTA also has an uneasy relationship with technologists within the Boston community. Three guys from MIT hacked the subway system to show the security vulnerabilities, and they presented it at DEF CON and not to the MBTA directly. The MBTA was not happy. DEF CON is the hackers' conference. However, we have Portland, the TriMet, doing amazing things. Bar in San Francisco and Chicago. And don't forget, Chicago hasn't won the World Series either, and they're cursed by a goat. So, what we needed in Boston was a hero. We needed just more than one, we needed two. Josh Robin and Chris Dempsey of the Massachusetts Department of Transportation came forward as those two daring government employees that said, yes, we are going to put Boston on the map with open data. And they did it, but they didn't know how to do it, so they did decide first to build a community. So we gathered together in a room week after week to talk about our community, to figure out how we were going to do this together. And the first step was actually to create relationship principles. And the first one is that we will respect each other's resources. So developers won't bring down servers, and the government won't ask the developer to build an iPhone app in a day. This was really important. Next step, of course, was release the data. The MBTA could release it however they wanted. So what they decided first to do was take the paper schedule and make it an electronic API so computers could access it, to developers could access it. The next step was actually releasing five bus lines as real time and then all of the bus lines. Then the contest started. So here we are, within an hour after the data being released, we already have one web application. After two days, after a week, we have dozens of iPhone apps, uh, regular phone apps, and phone, I'm um, sorry, web pages. But we also have signs, $150 LED sign that can be hung in any coffee shop anywhere in the city telling you when the next tra train or bus is coming. Uh, this was fantastic, and this blew the socks off of people in government. But the most important thing is developers actually don't want to do this for money because you can't pay them enough. So you need to reward them with unique and excellent prizes like a subway pass for a year or <laughs> your very own bus sign. So <laughs> as the word got out, this was a great success story. We're all very proud of it. And it was nice that the White House noticed, but what was more important is the Boston Globe and other local newspapers noticed because the government officials got that positive feedback that this was, in fact, the best thing that the MBTA has done in its history, aside being founded. So what do you do? Repeat. Have it all over again. More data comes out. Now it's one year later. It's 2010. We have every single bus line is now available as real-time data. We have all the train lines except the green line. This is a very big deal. And now here we are, Boston, along with 
Portland, San Francisco, Chicago, with our own app showcase. So the really important thing is that this could not have been done without community. And this is where Tim O'Reilly's vision of government as a platform is critical. As government releases data, the community takes that data and makes applications, makes innovation, makes government better. Because we can't do this alone. If we go it alone, we're not going to succeed. So you can try and paint sidewalks all over town, or crosswalks if you want, or you can work on it together. Because we all have skills that we must use. And if it's not us, then who? And if it's not now, then when? So please, think of that when you go back to your communities and continue to be awesome.